Good morning and welcome to This Week. One year ago... Tonight, I can report to the American people, the United States has conducted an operation that killed Osama bin Laden, the leader of Al-Qaeda. With Osama gone, are we safe or what risks remain? We'll ask our headline of the President's Chief Counterterrorism Advisor, John Brennan. Then... Our businesses have added more than four million jobs over the past two years. Four years into the greatest recession of our lifetimes, the recovery has begun. This president has been anti-jobs, anti-investment, anti-growth. But is it built to last? We'll ask our all-star panel of experts in a special discussion with our partners at the University of Virginia's Miller Center. Plus, it's great to be here this evening in the vast, magnificent Hilton Ballroom, or what Mitt Romney would call a little fixer-upper. It's Washington's prom night. It's kind of hard to be funny with the uh, President of the United States sitting right next to you looking at you, and yet somehow, day in and day out, Joe Biden manages to do it. We've got all the jokes, the glitz, and the glamour from last night's White House Correspondents' Dinner. From ABC News, this week with George Stephanopoulos, it's your voice, your vote. Reporting from the museum in Washington, D.C., George Stephanopoulos. Good morning. Much of official Washington may be sleeping in this morning after Capitol's Hollywood night, the White House Correspondents Dinner. Lindsay Lohan showed up on the red carpet. Kim Kardashian and George Clooney, too. All for the chance to rub elbows with cabinet secretaries, journalists, and generals. This year's stand-up duel, President Obama versus ABC's Jimmy Kimmel. Mr. President, you remember, remember when the country rallied around you in hopes of a better tomorrow? That was hilarious. Take Mitt Romney. He and, I, he and I actually have a lot in common. We also both have degrees from Harvard. I have one. He has two. What a snob. <laughs> Everyone was fair game and just a little on edge. Who could forget what happened last year? As President Obama was enjoying jokes about Osama bin Laden, People think bin Laden is hiding in the Hindu Kush, but did you know that every day from 4 to 5 he hosts a show on C-SPAN? He had already ordered Navy SEALs to Pakistan where they would find and kill the Al-Qaeda leader. It was two years ago this weekend, just as the Correspondents' Dinner was wrapping up, when we learned that a terrorist had tried to blow up a truck bomb in Times Square. And intelligence officials are now on alert for an Al-Qaeda-inspired attack to mark the anniversary of bin Laden's death. So we want to get the latest on that threat from the man President Obama counts on, his chief counterterrorism advisor, John Brennan. Thank you for coming in. Good morning, George. This morning. So, you know, we know that al-Qaeda pays attention to anniversaries, and security has been beeped up, especially at airports. Is there any indication that an actual plot is in the works? Well, we are vigilant uh, throughout the course of the year, but on a day that marks the one-year anniversary of bin Laden being brought to justice, we are especially vigilant. At this time, we don't see uh, any active plot that is underway, but we are maintaining our guard. We're following every lead. Uh, there are always are reports about al-Qaeda trying to penetrate our defenses. But at this point, uh, our counterterrorism professionals are doing their job, uh, both here in the United States as well as abroad. But the FBI and Homeland Security this week did say that they believe the al-Qaeda affiliate in Yemen is making new efforts to target Western airports? We're particularly concerned about al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, which is located in Yemen. They have demonstrated both the intent as well as the capability to try to carry on attack with the underwear bomber, Christmas Day, it's a couple of years ago, as well as uh, trying to integrate a IED, improvised explosive device, into a printed cartridge that was going to come aboard a cargo plane here. Uh, they are continuing to try to, again, carry out an attack against U.S. persons inside of Yemen, as well as against the homeland. We're working very closely with our Yemeni partners to track down all these leads, and uh, on a regular but basis... they're still focused on planes? Uh, yes, aviation has been a target, has been a traditional target of al-Qaeda. They continue to do that. 9-11, uh, obviously, they used aircraft as weapons. Uh, so we need to maintain our vigilance, uh, particularly overseas, at these last points of departure and making sure that we're doing everything that we can to work with our, our partners internationally to, to uh, protect the traveling public. Do they have the capability now to carry out anything like a 9-11 attack? Their capability has been degraded significantly. We have taken off the battlefield, the founding leader, as well as other leading operatives. Uh, we have degraded their infrastructure, the capability to train, the capability to deploy operatives. So their capability has been degraded. Our defenses have increased, but that doesn't mean that we can rest. And we're not going to rest until al-Qaeda, the organization, is destroyed and is eliminated from areas in Afghanistan, Pakistan, Yemen, Africa, and other areas. Can, we're determined to do that. Can you say one year out 
how much difference killing bin Laden made? I think it made a tremendous difference. It's taken away the founding leader of that organization, who was a symbolic, uh, uh, a, a symbol of Al-Qaeda's sort of murderous agenda worldwide. And so that has had, I think, a, a profound impact on the organization. Uh, Mr. Zawahri, uh, who is his uh, successor, is uh, somebody who doesn't have the same uh, sort of institutional support. He doesn't have the same charisma. But he has taken more control than we expected, hasn't he? Well, I think, uh, you know, he is now at the top of the Al-Qaeda leadership structure. And uh, this is something that we're determined to make sure that we're able to dismantle and destroy. Uh, so uh, clearly, Al-Qaeda has a number of different franchises worldwide. Uh, again, we have degraded them significantly with the help of our APAC and Afghan partners uh, in that area. But there's a lot of work to be done yet in Yemen as well as in areas of, of Africa. When Leon Panetta left the CIA to become Secretary of Defense, he said that we are, quote, within reach of strategically defeating Al-Qaeda. Is that victory at hand? I don't look at it as, as a victory. I think, again, we have to destroy the organization. We have to take all of their operatives, their leaders, their training camps, uh, take away their safe havens, uh, and we're not going to rest. The president has made it very clear. We have to do everything possible to protect the American people, and the destruction of that organization is our ultimate goal. On Friday, President Obama's campaign released a video to mark the anniversary and suggested that Osama bin Laden might be alive today had Mitt Romney been president. He took the harder and the more honorable path, and the one that produced, in my opinion, the best result. It's not worth moving heaven and earth, spending billions of dollars just trying to catch one person. He was referring to the hunt for Osama bin Laden. That drew, as you may know, a very sharp rebuke uh, from Senator John McCain. Here's what he said. He said, shame on Barack Obama for diminishing the memory of September 11th and the killing of Osama bin Laden by turning it into a cheap political attack ad. He is doing a shameless end zone dance to help himself get reelected. No one disputes that the president deserves credit for ordering the raid, but to politicize it in this way is the height of hypocrisy. Your response? I don't do politics. I don't do the campaign. I'm not a Democrat or Republican. I'm a counterterrorism advisor to the president. All that I know is that the president made a decision when he was given the opportunity to take a gutsy decision to carry out that raid with our special forces in Abbottabad, Pakistan. Uh, President made that decision. I think the American people are you know, clearly very appreciative and supportive of that decision. We're safer today as a result. And therefore, um, all I know is that the president made the decision when he uh, had to. You said it was a gutsy call. Mitt Romney has said that any president would have made the same decision. Do you agree with that? All I know is that the president made the call when he needed to. And it, as people have said, it was a divided uh, room as far as, you know, some of the, the principal sentiments on this issue were concerned. It's been reported that the vice president, the secretary of defense, the secretary of state, all against it, yet the president overrode them. Uh, there was active discussion up until the, the last moment on this, and there were differences of view, clearly. But uh, the president took all that counsel, uh, looked at what the risks were, looked at the risk to forces, the chances for a successful mission, and decided that uh, bin Laden's uh, removal from the battlefield was critically important to this country, uh, both in terms of making sure that justice was meted out for the, the death of thousands of not just Americans, but also people worldwide. So he made the decision when he had to. You were right at the center, but what were you most worried about? Uh, there were, you know, what we didn't know. You know, we had a certain uh, perspective as far as what the special forces might encounter when they got in the compound, but we didn't know whether or not there were going to be tunnels as far as bin Laden's escape route, what type of uh, explosives might have been rigged to that compound, what our special forces were going to confront, how they were going to get in there and out safely. So there were a number of the, uh, you know, details of that operation that really left many of us, you know, very nervous and anxious about uh, the ability to carry out the mission, get bin Laden, and then also get our forces out safely. This was a raid. Most of the uh, attacks against al-Qaeda over the last couple of years have been by unmanned drones uh, and taken a decimated the top leadership. Uh, are you concerned, though, that this is a, a, a technology that is now going to be exploited by our enemies? And do you stand by the statement you've made in the past that as effective as they've been, they have not killed a single civilian? That seems hard to believe. Well, what I said was that over a period of time before my public remarks that we had no information about a single civilian, be a, a non-combatant being killed. Uh, unfortunately, in war, there are uh, casualties, including among the civilian population. We have done everything possible in Afghanistan and other areas to reduce 
any risks to that civilian population. Unfortunately, Al Qaeda, you know, uh, burrows within these areas, uh, you know, safe havens as well as areas where there are civilians. But uh, we've been very, very judicious in working with our partners to try to be surgical in terms of addressing those terrorist threats. And the president has told us we want to make sure that we protect the American people. And unfortunately, sometimes you have to take life to save lives. And that's what we have been able to do to prevent these individual terrorists from carrying out the murderous attacks. John Brennan, thanks very much for your time this morning. Thank you, George.